Hi, my name is Derek Garcia with LearnSBOM.com, and today I'll be reviewing Detract Audit, an API client for Dependency Track. Detract Audit is great for setting up and managing your Dependency Track projects via the command line, but it can also be worked into your CI CD pipelines, including Team City CI. However, today I'll be demonstrating the CI CD capabilities with a GitHub action. Before starting, you'll need admin access to a Dependency Track server. If you don't have a server set up, we've done a previous demo on Dependency Track that guides you through the setup process. However, unlike our dependency track demonstration, I'm hosting my server on another machine. Briefly, this can be done by changing the API base URL field from localhost to your domain or IP address in the Docker Compose YAML file. Once you have access to your server, there is some setup we need to do. First, head to the Administration tab, and under Access Management, we need to select Teams. You can create a new team for this if you wish, but I'm just going to modify the existing automation team. Make sure you copy the API key, because we'll need that later. Next, we need to add some extra permissions. We can just add it with this plus symbol here, but we'll need to add portfolio management, view vulnerability, and project creation. And with that, we're all set. Now I'll switch over to my Ubuntu server and we'll get started working with the tool. Detract Audit is built with Go, so make sure you have that installed before using the tool. To install, we can use Go install like so. All right, just make sure you use Ozon RU instead of Ozen Tech like the documentation says. Uh, it's a known issue, but it's most likely due to some out of date code somewhere. Afterward, we can check that it installed with the help flag. And there we go. To start, we'll make a new dependency track project. If you've seen our dependency track review, you'll know it can be a bit of a hassle to upload files with curl. Detract Audit handles all that for you, making it easy to upload new projects. I've got a few example SBOMs in this directory that I'll be using. Just make sure these are Cyclone DX SBOMs, otherwise they'll be rejected by dependency track. To create the new project, we can use the following command. To break down the command, the dash A indicates to create the project if it doesn't already exist. The dash I is the SBOM we're uploading, which is bomb.xml by default. The dash N and dash V flags, name and version, are needed to create the project. The dash U is the address to the dependency tracked API. The last thing is the dash K flag, which is our API key, which I'll use the one I copied earlier. And now that I've added the key, we can run it. After a moment, we'll see that it uploaded. Now, if I switch back to the dependency track and refresh, we can see we have a new project. And our full list of components, this is a secure SBOM. So there's no information about any potential vulnerabilities, but we still have that full components list. For the next part, we'll need the project identifier, which can be found in the view details tab. So here, I'll just copy this identifier. All right, and now if I switch back to our server, we can now use this project identifier to upload SBOMs directly. However, you can still use the dash A and dash N flags in combination if you wish to use the name rather than ID, but the ID is probably a bit more secure. Up to now, we've been using Detract Audit in async mode, but in sync mode, we can get vulnerability information from the dependency track server. We can use this with the dash S flag. This time I'm uploading an SBOM generated from a vulnerable project, but now this time I have the dash S flag enabled. Using the dash P flag, we can use that project ID we copied. And lastly, add the API key. Now we'll get a message that we're currently uploading and waiting for results. So after a moment, you can see that we found one vulnerability. Switching back to the dependency track, if I reload the page, we'll now see that we have a reported medium vulnerability. Detract Audit also supports a non-zero return value for use in CI/CD pipelines. So for example, if I switch back to the terminal and I check the return value of the SBOM we just sent, 
we can see it's one because we got a vulnerability found. So any pipeline near this would fail. I'll demonstrate this later with the GitHub action. However, we can use the dash D flag to set a threshold, which can either be critical, high, medium, low, or info as our minimum threshold. So if I run this command again, but this time I pass in the dash D and let's say I have a high threat tolerance. I'm going to set this to high. And once we get the return value, we shouldn't see any information at all and to get a zero return value. So we see we don't get any warnings, but if I check the return value, see this time it's zero because it didn't meet our threat criteria. I've already set up my GitHub action, but briefly make sure this file is under .github slash workflows. Uh, to go over it, uh, it's very simple. First, we check out the branch so we can scan the files. Uh, that's later for generating SBOM. Then we install go so we can install detract audit using the same command we used on the command line in the Ubuntu server. Next, we need to generate the SBOM we're going to upload. So in this case, I'm using sift, which will just scan the project directory and create a CDX SBOM XML file. Lastly, we'll upload to dependency track. And in this case, I'm using secrets. You don't want to hard code the dependency track key and the URL. And this, in this example, I'm going to name this a GitHub action demo, and we'll see a new project on the dependency track page. So I'll start this commit. And switching over to the actions, you should see. Now this is a vulnerable project. So we should see that because it returns a non-zero value, this build will fail. we can see the build failed and looking at where it failed we can get a full list of all the reasons why it failed so a brief overview of the different vulnerabilities and if we go back to the dependency track and we reload you'll see our new project is here with the same information as before you can get our components list and all that with the same vulnerability information this is just a small example but this shows that detract audit can be fit into any sort of workflow and that wraps up Dtract Audit. This is a great tool for setting up and working with dependency track without the hassle of formatting curl requests correctly. It can also be easily integrated with your CI/CD pipeline, ensuring production is secure yet continuous. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to reach out to us at learnaspbomb.com. Thank you for checking out this video. If you really liked it, be sure to check out our other videos right here, and then you can also subscribe right up top here. And again, thank you. Bye-bye.